Hey, welcome to this new tutorial where we will make this cool effect with the help of simulation nodes. And for this to work, you have to go to the Blender website, blender.org and you have to go to the download section and into the experimental branch because this function is only available as experimental right now. Um, go to all archived builds and scroll a little bit down. Here we have the geometry nodes simulation. You can download this and we have a bunch of them. Take the newest one and then we can open this version. Inside of Blender now we have here our default stuff, we can delete everything and we can add back in our great icosphere. And then we can right away go into our geometry nodes editor and we can create a new node tree and we can collapse our right window. And of course, for simulation nodes, we also need our timeline because now the first thing we will do is we can we have to add our first simulation nodes and you can add nodes with shift and a and here we have the new submenu simulation so here add this first the group output and then we want to import the group input and i've already covered what those two nodes do so it's basically looping it's not quite a loop but but you can take it as such and now in here we want to create points on our icosphere distribute points on faces and you can see uh, blender doesn't update and this is because you have to scrub on your timeline here and this is because of the simulation stuff as said, this stuff is highly experimental and you can experience a lot of crashes also. So be kind to Blender. This is all highly experimental. Now on our points, we want to convert our points to vertices. And we can scrub here so it updates. And now we can see we have great vertices. Now here inside our loop system or simulation system we can now extrude our points with an mesh and extrude mesh node and of course we have here vertices so we have to change that to vertices and now if we play you can see it works but it's extremely buggy and this is because it is it is extruding our first vertices and then it adds this on top then it extrudes everything and the first vertices and take that on top. We don't want this, we only want to extrude the top vertice. How can we do this? Um, we can store our top attribute with an store named attribute node like this and we can of course change this to boolean and we want to store the point and you can call it whatever you want maybe apple and now we want to import it after we loop here we want to have it import as our selection so we take a named attribute node like this and we want to have the apple and this should be, of course, a Boolean. Now we can add this into the selection. But now you can see it doesn't work. And this is because at first we don't have any top information. So we need to bypass our first step. How can we do this? We can take a Boolean math node, set to OR, and we can use the the vertice neighbors node because on our first frame or the first step of our simulation every vertice is alone 
and because they aren't extruded and so they have no neighbors or edges on them. So we can take our vertex count for the vertex neighbors and with a compare node set to integer we can make it equal so if our vertices are lonely so they have no friends or <laughs> neighbors so zero then we bypass our named attribute and now this should work and it isn't buggy anymore yay this is a setup you have to learn but then it works and here we can change the speed or the resolution so every time it should update 0.1. And now we want to have a, a cool a cool noise effect. And we can do this by using the set position node. And we can use the noise texture. And we can use this into the offset. Now you can see it's flying away. And this is because we have here in the vector math, we need to offset it by minus 0.5. And this because the noise texture has a range from zero to one, and the average of this is 0 0.5. So every time it adds 0 0.5 in the y axis, 0 0.5 in the x axis, and 0 0.5 in the z axis. Of course, we don't want this, so we reset it by doing this. And now you can see it kind of works, but kind of not and this is because it's way too strong so we can use a scale node and maybe use 0.1 like this and this is something this looks cool you can already use this as an effect this is really cool and of course you can also so change our parameters here like this and you can create cool effects like this. Isn't this cool? So we have now something like this, but now we can't see it in the viewport. And this is because we are dealing with only edges and we can't see edges in the viewport. So a way to fix it is if we convert our edges, so the mesh, so mesh to curves, so now we have converted it to a curve and now we can convert our curve back to a mesh. Doesn't make sense, I know, but now we can use a profile curve. So let's take a curve primitive, a curve circle, and let's change the resolution, something like this. And of course, let's lower this, something like this maybe. And now you can see, you can see it when you render it. Oh, this, this looks cool. But of course, you can always change the number of, of lines you have here. So you can decrease it or you can also increase it by our, by our point count at the, at the beginning like this so now there are a bunch of a bunch of lines i leave it as, as 10 and now we want to have a cool material in our shader editor so how can we do this we want to have the length of every curve and we can do this by using a curve spline parameter node and an capture attribute node and because we have to capture it before the curve to mesh node before the curve to mesh node because there it was a curve and we can drag this into the group output because we want to store this into a new attribute and let's call it strawberry and now in the shader editor we can go into rendered mode and we can add a new material and of course we have to apply also this material here in the geometry nodes editor the material zero one and in the shader editor 
we can drag our straw berry like this and now we have the length of our curves and we can use this for controlling the color of our emission. So let's take a color ramp, set it to ease so it's smoother and let's make the inner things orange, orangish and the outside should be blue. Something like this. And I want to have the background completely back. And of course also some bloom like this. And this is, I think, the whole effect. And you can create crazy things with it. And of course you can also make a lot more with this. And it looks really cool and it isn't that complicated. So try it out on your own. And yes, I think this should be all. If you want to have great materials, I have a, I have a big material pack on my Gumroad page. You can click on the link in the description and you can download it for free. But, and there's also an advanced version where we have a lot more advanced materials and great cool features. And you can check that out if you want to. And otherwise, have a great weekend and thank you for watching. Hopefully, see you again. Bye.